two here. So we determined with a high quality pressure transducer, in this case the WPS 600C was used, that we can get some pretty in-depth information about the pump. That's cool, that's nice, there's interpretation that needs to go into this and research and all. It's part of the theory, but it's not where I want to be. Because, for anybody not familiar, bear with me a second, please, with how some of these hydraulic systems are set up. Now, this is just happens to be on a mini excavator, and this is a zoomed in section of the main valve stack, or uh, I believe in England they call it the valve slices. But each one of these is all fittings, different functions. These are all tied in with each other. You can't fit a wrench between these, let alone. I'm going to be right here scrolling through a few. We got some top ones here. I mean, this is, you got to pull 15 different lines to get to one individual line. That sucks. That leaves a lot of room for messed up fittings, oil dumped everywhere, um, damaged o rings, just straight aggravation. I mean, this was a new machine under warranty. This isn't even all covered in gook and soot and dirt and debris. And as we follow along, we got some more valving here. Let's see if we can do it this way without causing too much damage. We've got here, so now we've got one, two, we got regular 37 degree JIC fitting here. We've got an O-ring boss seal here. We've got an O-ring face seal here, all different sizes. Not fun. So that's a bunch of fittings you need. There's a little zoomed out. There's the main pump. We got some somewhat easy pressure taps coming off of the main pump in your auxiliary pump. Not terrible. Still got to do plumbing, still got to get dirty. And I mean, we got there's your rotational pump here for rotating the excavator around. But I mean, look at this mess of hoses here. It's, it's not fun. Not fun at all. Thankfully, you can still read B3 before all that. Gets dirty and all. Now you got to remember which hose went where and hope you don't plumb it in wrong. And you may be plumbing and on plumbing 20, 30 times in a diagnosis. Got more coming up here. So, I mean, you, you guys get the picture. I mean, there's all sorts of fittings and everything else. Solenoid valves. Uh, what else we got here? No matter what it is, I mean, you got your regular hydraulic cylinder where you've got your standard lines and then uh, regular rubber style lines there. So, is there an easier way? I believe there is. I believe using something along the lines of Pico's MVH kit, noise, vibration, harshness, or using accelerometers in general, something that picks up the X, so your X, Y, and Z axis, would be incredibly beneficial. And I made a trial run of doing just that. So let's pull up, bear with me here. So I used a passive piezo pickup on a mechanically injected diesel. What's a mechanically injected diesel have to do with a hydraulic system? It's the same thing. It's got a pumping mechanism. It's got lines that transmit it. It is pumping fluid at high pressures and it's performing work. So here we used a passive piezo pickup, which was used for a diesel tachometer, and we synced it off of no, or a number five cylinder, number five in cylinder pressure transducer waveform, and number five injection line. Now this was a dead cylinder, no contribution whatsoever, no heat, nothing. But notice here how as we go through, or I'm sorry, I did not sync off of five on this one. I actually synced off of I believe this is injector three. Either way, we can see how, number five, we have no pulsation, no amplitude, no nothing. And yet each injector, it's a five cylinder, we have some kind of indication that fluid is flowing and causing turbulence. So, if we go back through here, and then we do, just to prove the pulsations occur, 
We've got a relative compression test, so number five, number five, following it through, pulsation for each hump. And then if we zoom in, just to further prove the point. So there's validity here. If there is turbulence within a line, we can pick that we can pick that up and we can graph it. And then there we are. So five, three, one, two, four. We can even figure out to a certain degree injection timing, but we're not really super concerned with diesels right now. Although the, the base applications are the same. What we're concerned about is being able to come in and not have to take this apart. Alright? So if we could clamp a regular pickup on any one of these metal fittings, now we do have to watch here with these angles, fluid starts to flow real turbulent and goofy when it goes through angles. So we want to be on a straight. We want to be on a straight section. Maybe they're neural, maybe down here. I don't know how much the actual standard hose carcass will transmit the vibrations. I would assume it would be pretty decent. But imagine being able to take an NVH style accelerometer, clamp it right on to various points in the hydraulic system, and by monitoring the vibrations and frequencies you pick up, have a good indication of a, a valve that's not actuating properly, uh, be it a weak spring and it's actuating too early, or uh, it's jammed up so it's not actuating enough blown seals and cylinders by being able to detect fluid flowing, thus creating vibration when it shouldn't, you've now narrowed it down pretty easily without taking anything apart. Now is it going to diagnose the whole machine without ever taking anything apart? No. It is a good first test in theory and with proof of concept of the diesel that you can narrow it down to a certain degree and from there you can vastly eliminate how many of all these fittings you're going to take apart. So, how do we do that? How do we accomplish that? Is this a plug and play, which is standard off-the-shelf items? Yes and no, and we'll get to that.